From up here, you can see all the planets in our solar system. But do you know what exactly a planet is? Find out. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn were the first space objects called planets. The word planet means wanderer because the ancient Greeks saw them as moving lights in the sky. But the ancient Greeks didn't think of Earth as a planet. They thought it was the center of the universe and all space bodies revolved around it. Over time, humans learned the Sun is the center of our solar system and all the planets, including Earth, orbit around it. Still, defining a planet back then was easy. Everything, the Sun, the Moon, the Earth, all space bodies were called planets. Until a new invention came along. In 1781, Uranus became the first planet discovered by telescope. And by then, scientists had realized that the Sun was a star and the Moon was a natural satellite of the Earth. But everything else was pretty much described as a planet. Neptune was discovered in 1846 and Pluto in 1930. But Pluto is different from terrestrial planets like Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, or the gas giants like Jupiter or Saturn, or the ice giants like Uranus or Neptune. Pluto is small, and its moon Charon is half the size of Pluto. It's so big that the two are sometimes called a double planet system. Pluto has an unusual orbit that sometimes brings it closer to the Sun than Neptune, and its orbit isn't circular like the other planets. Pluto is different, and that led to confusion. By 1992, planetary scientists found a number of ice worlds in the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a donut-shaped region in the outer solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune. And it's filled with objects made uh, mostly of ice, so water ice, but also methane and ammonia ice. Some of these objects are large enough that we would call them ice worlds. And some of these ice worlds in the Kuiper Belt, they look a lot like Pluto. And so astronomers were faced with this question, uh, if we were gonna call Pluto a planet, what were we gonna call all these hundreds of thousands of other objects very similar to Pluto in the Kuiper Belt? So astronomers decided they needed to clarify what exactly is a planet. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, a worldwide group of top astronomers, came up with a new definition. A planet is a celestial body that's in orbit around the sun, it has enough mass so gravity helps make it round, and it's cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. So that means that the object has enough mass and enough gravity that it consumes or sweeps up other small bodies in its orbital path. And Pluto, since there's a lot of other objects out there, doesn't do that, it's just too small. So what to do with Pluto? Astronomers came up with the idea of a dwarf planet. A dwarf planet orbits around the sun. It has enough mass and gravity to form an almost round shape, but it isn't big enough to clear the neighborhood. It also can't be a moon. As of 2020, we have five dwarf planets in our solar system. In order closest to the sun out, they are Ceres, Pluto, Hahumea, Makimaki, and Eris. Ceres is the closest dwarf planet to the sun. It's located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, making it the only dwarf planet in the inner solar system. Next comes Pluto, then Hahumea. Hahumea has an elongated shape rather than being totally round, probably because of the speed of its rotation. Next is Makimaki. Makimaki has a moon and is a classic Kuiper Belt object. And finally, Eris. Eris is almost as large as Pluto and was once considered to be our solar system's 10th planet. Planetary scientists are still looking for dwarf planets. This is an active area of research. There may be another hundred of them in our solar system and probably hundreds more just outside the Kuiper Belt. Not everyone agrees with the new definition of a planet. Some still think Pluto deserves that title. That's true, but the definition of a planet may still change as we learn more about our solar system. And just because Pluto and Ceres and all those other objects are called dwarf planets, it really doesn't make them any less interesting. What we call them is, is almost the least interesting aspect of these objects, which have a fascinating variety of phenomena. It's just our current way of classifying one of the many wonders of space. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, material for educators and parents, and much more. You'll find it all at sciencetrek.org. <laughs>